I've already been corrected before I started. Okay, guys, welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming to the Critical Mass Conference. It's great to see. Um, that's basically it. First of all, then, we're going to start with Truth Juice Dave. So, guys, if you could give yourself, give Dave a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for taking the trouble um, to contribute to Mass Roadshow. I hope I'm going to do you proud. Um, there's lots of information, new information coming out on a daily basis of this gap that's getting portrayed on us. Um, and I don't know where to start. Uh, I'm going to draw a different picture for you um, than what most of you, well, that's most of you probably may know what I'm going to say. It's, it's, it's hard to know where to start, where to start. The picture's so big and intricate and all the rest of it. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll start with this thing here. This came through the door this morning. Um, and it's the Bootle Champion, you know one of those free rag mags that come through the letterbox. I never read it. It normally goes straight in the bin. But I went, whoa, look at that. Driving ban for a drunk mobility scooter user. Now this guy literally lives around the corner from me. I don't know him, but he does. Right, okay, let's read it. A man has lost his driving license after he was stopped on his electric mobility scooter late at night while over the limit. Sefton Magistrates Court were told how police were informed that Thomas Stenson of Edinburgh Close was driving erratically on his mobility scooter on Hereford Drive and had collided with a bin on the roadside <laughs> at 11.15 on January the 19th. Prosecutor, oh, prosecutor, right, Paula Grogan said that when Mobile Patrol then arrived in the area, it was noted that he seemed to be unable to drive in a straight line. Following a roadside breath test, which he failed, he was arrested and taken to Copy Lane Police Station, where further tests yielded 91 milligrams of alcohol in the blah, blah, blah. After Stenson pleaded guilty to driving while unfit through alcohol, his solicitor, Mark Burke, bastard, <laughs> lying bastard, <laughs> informed the court that he had made inquiries as to whether it was an appropriate charge and whether it was in the public interest to prosecute him. The vehicle only has two gears, he said, with top speed being eight miles an hour. <laughs> And he depends on the scooter for daily living. <laughs> Saying that Stenson had near, had, has near damage in his neck and living with problems with his legs, he said he is unable to walk any distance and he was constantly falling over <laughs> prior to getting the mobility scooter. Oh, must be out of range. Hold on. Move over here. In response to his inquiries, he said that he received a letter from the CPS informing them that a scooter is a mechanically propelled vehicle, thereby making Stenson liable to this modification, but that he can continue to use the scooter as it is not required by law to have a license to do so. You probably will regret that on your hands are, sorry, you, will probably, you probably will regret that your hands are tied and that you have to impose a disqualification at all, he told magistrates. Clearly, this is a case that has exceptional circumstances. However, the magicians, the magistrates, said that despite how comparatively less dangerous scooters are, Stencil had still been a danger to the public. Anyway, he was fined £110 and banned from driving for 20 months. Let's give, uh, hold on, there's no other names there, no. The law's ridiculous, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, yes. You know, the law's an ass. I want to take you back a few days ago. There's a guy called John Doyle, implicated with, in the London bombings, Horse Guard Parade, was it? Where 42 people died. Have you, are you aware of the case? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. And because he had a piece of paper 
from the fleet service. It's only a smile. Because um, he had a piece of paper saying you will not be followed up for facing charges from the police. From the, not from the Queen, from the police. The judge said, we can't do nothing. Man's got immunity. Bye. Now, if he did kill people, I'm not saying he's guilty, I'm not saying he's innocent. The thing is, he's been accused and alleged. Right? Why? Why isn't he in court now? Facing the like, accusers? Because a promise was made. And a promise is enforceable in the court of law. Very interesting in the word promise. If I make a promise to anybody here to do something and I don't, you can take me to court and enforce that promise on me. Okay, well. Uh, right, where do you stop? Where do you go? Picture's so big. And I'm going to come to a big point at the end. Here's another case. <clears throat> Um, which is, which goes alongside that John Doyle. Um, this is a friend of mine. Some of you might know him as Fat John. I don't know any, anybody who knows him. Um, he was uh, in court. He was parked outside a hospital in Liverpool. Um, not on yellow lines, but uh, he was parked at the end of somebody's drive. And a little old biddy looking out the window. Yeah, he's blocking my way. So she rang the police uh, while he was in the hospital visiting his friend. And um, a CEO came down on his push bike and slapped a ticket on him for obstruction. Went to court. Yeah, it was quite funny actually because he, he rang me from the court. He was in the dock. <laughs> my phone rings. Yeah, Tim, Tim, I'm in the court now and the magistrate's in front of me and blah. <laughs> and, and he won't listen to me because I've said I'm a man and this time you're there anyway. Um, so they all ran out of the court as they did because they can't speak to a man. And a man can't be heard in court. Only persons. Right? So, and then they issued the fine of, I think, £275 and whatever it was. Um, but John got uh, manhandled and pushed out the court by uh, the gas fitters, Chief O.S. And uh, oh. <laughs> have a look at the logo, it says gas. Um, and uh, anyway, he then he put an appeal in. Uh, then he got an appeal date. And he said, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? He said, well, I can't do it for you. But shall we have a laugh and see what happens here? He said, yeah. I said, write to them and ask them which entity is it that they want to appear in the court? Do they want the man? The natural person? Or the legal person? A letter came back to which this is the response to. I'll try and keep names out, apart from the uh, clerk of the justice who is Mr. Keith Townend. Keith Townend's very promising, uh, well, he's very prominent in the Liverpool court system. It, it appears he's clerk of the court to every court. Anyway, right, I request a clarification on which entity you were summoning to your place of business in January, in particular whether it was the legal person, the natural person, or the flesh and blood man, me. A letter was posted into my home address, an address to private and protected Mr. John Smith. By yourselves, the content of which does not make clear to me which entity you are summoning to your place of business. I'm a living soul, flesh and blood man, I declare that blah, 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 blah. What is meant by the term private and protected? Right. Um, so I got, I got in here, I went, what did this say? What private and protected mean? What the hell is that all about? So, anyway, couldn't find anything, legal dictionaries, private protected, no. Then, earlier on this, uh, last week, or this week, um, while researching um, 
this John Doyle, the IRA guy, I come across this act, the Internationally Protected Persons Act, 1978. Wow, uh, has anybody aware of it? Yeah. Well, for those who aren't aware of it, <coughs> let me tell you what a protected person is. Right. A protected person means, in relation to an alleged offence, any of the following, namely, a person who at the time of the alleged offence is a head of state, a member of a body which performs the functions of a head of state under the constitution of the state, a head of government or a minister for foreign affairs and is outside the territory of the state in which he holds office. A person who at the time of the alleged offence is a representative or an official of the state or an official or agent of an international organisation of an intergovernmental character is entitled under international law to special protection from attack on his person, freedom or dignity and does not fall within the preceding paragraph. Now, what that protection gives is protection from anybody trying to arrest them, whether that be in the car, whether that be walking down the street or in the house. In the home. Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. But that's just a different yeah. yeah, it's immunity. Um, it's protected person stuff. But it's interesting. Inter hang on. International organisation of an intergovernmental character. So if, you, if you're a member of an organisation which has an inter-government uh, inter character and you are a representative, you get protected person status. What's an inter, inter uh, sorry, an intergovernmental character? Anybody have any idea? International intergovernmental character? Churches, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps churches. They're an international organisation and they are intergovernmental. Because they believe in God, don't they? Churches. Not churches. Not just the church itself, but the actual people. Churches may be if they're members of an inter intergovernmental character. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's a church. A protected person and are its representatives yeah. a protected person? Well said, right. And they all believe in God, don't they? Which God? We're coming to that. We're coming to that. We're coming to that. Right, so that's where we're going next. God. Right, so you've got God, man, state citizens, persons. Uh, uh, excuse me, and Lord God. There's two gods in the Bible. There's more than two gods, mate. There's, there's Lord Almighty, I can keep going. There's yeah. hundreds. <laughs> there's hundreds of gods in the Bible. Literally hundreds. Well, there's basically two gods in the Bible. No, there isn't. Well, no. Okay, I want there's more than two. Yeah. <laughs> right. <coughs> okay, so... In the beginning, God created, da, 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 da. and on the sixth day, God created man, and then he had the day off, right, because he was knackered. <laughs> well, on the sixth day, God said, come let us create man in our image after our likeness, and he gave man dominion on the earth over all living things and all plants and fruits and seeds, and all the rest of it, right? And then he had the day off. He never had the day off. Creation was finished. It was finished, and that was it, right? Then along come Lord God. The Lord, who's the Lord God? Well, Lord means anointed. 
right? But this created God came and created man, or these gods, sorry, gods, it says gods, it doesn't say God on the sixth day. These gods come and created man in their image. So man must have already been here, because if, if the, the Bible's very precise in everything it says, very precise. It, it's a book which is a book of law. Right, so something created man in their image, which is what we are here now. Right? And then creation was finished. Then this Lord God appears, whoever that is, and I was anointed by someone, somebody or some people perhaps. Perhaps it was the people getting together, growing in consciousness and uh, trying to form communities. I'm not saying this is right, I'm saying think about this, right? And they needed a leader to administer things. So they create this Lord God uh, who, 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 who administers things over them with their say-so, right? <coughs> So this God, this Lord God, then creates a protected area and calls it the Garden of Eden. And then gets Adam to till the land and dig the gold. Gold's very important. Uh, there's a seat here, actually. Get lost with this out now. Um, so, where were we? So maybe the people created the Lord God because the Lord means anointed. And maybe man said, well, we're going to have, some, have somebody in charge. So this Lord God did it, did it, did it, did and, say, and he said, right, you can eat from all the trees in the garden apart from the tree of knowledge. And what happens? Original sin's born. And Eve, Eve, uh, Supposedly, supposedly, right, okay. But also, don't forget that um, this Lord God created Adam out of the clay. What do you make out of clay? Statues. Statutes. Okay, so, <coughs> don't worry, it'll all get very interested in a minute. Um, if you don't like it, you can go. <laughs> I'm not worried. But you will miss you will miss something if you go. Right. So <coughs> then, um, then then he, he breathed this Cain and Abel and all this sort of stuff. Right. Um, now I'm gonna move on now. I'm gonna move on. Um, to person. Does anybody know? The root of the word person. Anybody? Shout out. Right, go on. Anybody else? Sorry? Absolutely, mask. It's a mask. If an actor's upon a certain stage, that's the very root word of it. Right. Just bear with me, I've papers everywhere. Um, this is the book. Ooh, it's a Masonic one as well. Ooh, <laughs> I am not a Freemason, but this book, every Freemason reads. They always have it. Just bear with me. James 2 states this. James 4, I think. Now James 2, 6 to 10. James 2, 6 to 10 states, Do not the rich oppress you and bring me forward the judgment seats and blaspheme that worthy name. Why? If you love thy neighbour as you do yourself, you do well. If you show respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced as such as transgressors of the law. This is not the Lord God speaking, this is God. Right? So you've got the Lord God, you've got God. Um, so that's, that's God. That's the Creator saying, you do not show respect to persons because if you do, you sin. So how many people here are persons? 
Now, does anybody not know what, what the person's birth certificate is? Are we all clued up on that? Nod your head. I can't hear nothing. Does anybody not know? Good. <coughs> so this person um, should be ignored, disrespected, and you should not show any respect to it whatsoever. Fiction. It's idolatry in the Bible. Absolutely it is. It's yeah. Fiction. Absolutely. Yeah, of course it is. Right, I'm just going to ask you one or two of you a question. And tell me to buy me own business if you want. What's your date of birth there? Yeah. Sixth of all Your date of birth? Sixth? Or sixty. Is it? Who are you? Allegedly. I'm a little bit older than you. Who about you, Rob? What's your date of birth? I'm not speaking no English. <laughs> John, what's your date of birth? No, the, 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 sorry, no, that's right, no, yeah. The, that's the, right, yeah. yeah. No, it isn't. That's not your date of birth. That's not your date of birth. That's the day you were born. Your date of birth is on the certificate. When your dad went along and registered you. That's your date of birth. So when you get a poll and you ask for your date of birth, this microphone's not working. Well, you're fixing it. When you get a poll and they ask you what your date of birth is, Get your birth certificate out and say, that's the date I was birthed into the United Kingdom. By your parents. Parent. Sorry? It's not true. It's not true. After all, your parents came to the tooth fairy in Sunday. So that's your date of birth. That's not your date you were born. Why don't they ask you for your date or your, li your live date of birth or live date of birth. There's a live birth certificate. Oh, so can't get a copy of your live birth record. Is this still working? Yeah. yeah. You can't get a copy of live... No, you can't. You can't get a copy. You can see it. They won't give you a copy of it. It's very haunted by the way. Hot technology. Was it? Was that God or Lord God? <laughs> 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 so, I don't know, that's the only miracle you can perform. <laughs> <laughs> so, is, th is this still working? Yeah. 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 Um, where was I? Yeah, your date of birth is the day your father went in as an informer and registered an uncertain parentage. Can't, can't have a look at you. <laughs> uh, have a look. Right? And it says, mother's name, maiden. Maiden name. They want the mother's maiden name. So you write the maiden name down. Father's informant's name. Your mother, by putting down maiden name, is saying she's not married. And she has produced an illegitimate bastard. It's true. It's true. Going to read something out to you now. It'll take me about five Your minutes. Your birth certificate documentaries, documentation should be straightforward and transparent. However, it soon becomes the most complex and secretive paper trail imaginable. This alone suggests a long history of corruption. The process involves a maze of secret and half-secret trusts, and various parts of legislation focused on claiming your estate. The modern birth certificate began as a settlement certificate issued in England in 1837 to officially record the poor granting basic rights to benefits in exchange for recognition of their status as owned property. Right, wait, wait, wait. right, lawful slaves, also known as indentured servants and bondsmen. Does anybody know what a bondsman is? 
in Scottish law. You were bonded to the laird. Yeah. Borg. Borg. That's what Borg means. You know, Captain K. Yeah, yeah we Borg. assimilate. You are assimilated. Yeah. You are assimilated. You are assimilated. You are a <laughs> You are my slave. Correct. And the queen of the colony. That's correct. Because the slave master. Correct. Okay. A child's birthplace was its settlement, where its bond began. Thus, a settlement is equivalent to a voluntary slave plantation. Since 1933, this is for New Zealand, but it's the same across, across the world. Dates may be different. New Zealand have been required to, by statute, to have a birth certificate and a tax identification number. Since 1990, under the United Nations and the World Health Organization, by the Convention of the Rights of the Child, the birth certificate process has become an international system of slavery. When you are born, a record of live birth is created as prima facie evidence of your life. The equivalent is a notification of birth for registration. Not birth registration, a birth for registration. It is your affidavit of life, which details that absolutely identify your living standing. It records your given name as a unique title, i.e. John to your estate. So you're John, and the estate is Smith. Right? Um, doo -doo -doo. right? The autograph of your mother establishes the origin of the estate, and an estate must come before a trust. You can't have a trust unless you've got an estate. Your mother and the state are now, by law, trustees in an expressed public trust, of which you are the beneficiary. You are the holder in expectancy of the estate, which will descend to you as of right when you attain, attain the age of majority. Soon your parents are told that you must be registered. They are under no such lawful obligation but the state is very insistent for reasons they won't tell you. According to ecclesiastical law, an estate can only be held in trust by a man. But your mother was asked for her maiden name, constituting maternity. It is either legitimate or natural. The former is the condition of the mother who has given birth to legitimate children, while the latter is the condition of her who has given birth to illegitimate children. Maternity is always certain. It's always certain who the mother is. While paternity is only presumed. <coughs> Bovia's Law Dictionary. Therefore, all naturally born children are illegitimate bastards with uncertain fatherhood, having no paternal holder of their estate when registering. An informant, unknowingly, makes an accusation as to your illegitimacy. <coughs> a person who informs or prefers an accusation against the mother. Black's law again. The State of Children Act 1969 says, for the purpose of this act, marriage includes void marriage. So you are legally a bastard without rights. Nullius filius, a bastard. A bastard has no inheritable blood in him whatsoever, and therefore no estate can descend to him. Bovia's law. Moreover, your given name, title, is recorded in the stillborn column. I think, I think you're in a dead, sorry. He keeps in... I know. Enough, if you just move, I think you're in a dead spot. You know, well, you can direct me. Go on, I'm the actor on stage. Which way? That way. I think, yeah. yeah. Just, any, just, just out of that, that particular... Just there. Spot. Okay. All right. Right, where are we? Uh, right, a stillborn child is one incapable of living if they do not in fact survive so long as to rebut this presumption of law. They cannot inherit. The state can now legally claim your estate, making you a ward of the state. In an estate for life, foreign site is trust. The estates for life created by the operation of law are fourth jointure. The estate for life is somewhat similar to the usufruct of the civil law. Um, Jointer is similar to usufruct, the right to derive, derive an income from the property of another. 
Your record of live birth and the registered evidence are used to create a spare certificate bond publicly certifying that a property title is re registered as a security for the national debt. It's like a warehouse receipt for the baby to delivered goods. Definition of a warehouse receipt. A warehouse receipt, which is considered a document of title, may be a negotiable instrument for use for financing inventory and security. At the same time, the bond converts your given name and family name into a trade name. Only corporations have a last name. A legal person has been created by the state as a franchise or a child of the parent corporation. The bond is also sold to the World Bank as a set law of the trust. Your weight in ounces on the record of live birth is to calculate your market value relative to gold. Your bond becomes a registered security which the Treasury uses as surety for Treasury securities such as Treasury bonds, notes and bills. So you have been monetized, the people truly are the credit of the nation. However, in a corrupted system, the people's credit is effectively human capital or livestock. <clears throat> Although the state can seize the legal person, maybe, as a ward of state, if the state's investment is threatened, its greatest value is realized from the matured working adult. The perpetrators of this deception know that you could one day discover the truth and invoke your power of attorney from the age of 18. <coughs> Anybody got a glass of water there, folks? Anyone? <coughs> right, Property Law Act of 2007. Person between 18 and 20 may do certain things, accept appointment, act, or as an attorney. Has the same effect as if a person were 20 years old. In short, you can attain the age of majority at 20 by declaring your own power of attorney from the age of 18. However, if they can somehow kill you off, legally speaking, they can claim your deceased estate, being your real property, lands, and personal property life. This is why the legal person is legally a vessel in which the state has a security interest <coughs> behind the bail bond. When you reach full legal age, you become the master of that vessel. The living you has gone to sea under Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction, which is the law of the sea you are missing for seven years and can be declared legally dead by the court. The same process is applied to ships and man has lost at sea. But you will probably voluntarily forfeit your estate. You may start work and register as a taxpayer. Who registered as a taxpayer? <laughs> Uh, or you may enrol on a voting register. Either way, you're transferring your estate to the state's legal person by registering as an accommodation party. If you decide not to register as the legal person, you are a vessel lost at sea. After seven years, you died without a will intestate. So someone is appointed to manage your estate. The public trust applies to the family court to manage your estate under the Protection of Personal Property Rights Act 1988. So... It's all fiction, it's all lies, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We know that, yeah. we know that. Um, so where does that leave you? Well, this God, creator, has given us dominion over everything. Right? And he's made a promise, hasn't he? Or it has made a promise. And that promise is, uh, how long have we been on now? Is that all? Oh, cracky. It's going to be a long one, this. <laughs> right, so. Right, so let's, let's go into who, who is God. Who is God? The God that you think is God is the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is a god, a demigod, a false god. So is the United States of America. So is Canada. So is France, Germany, Africa, anywhere, anywhere on the planet. It's, it's a god which we have created ourselves. A group of us have got together 
right? Not us, but our ancestors have got together and said, this is our land. This is our land. And we're going to protect it. But we need, we need the administrator to protect our land. Right? And we've created these criminal bastards. I'm sorry if I swear, but... You know, they are crooks. Yes, that's being right. these, cr these criminal bastards called members of parliament and houses of lords and, and, and these, these so-called sovereigns. Crown. Alleged. Right, these so-called sovereigns. We've created, we created them. Right. Or they were wiser than us. Or they the wise servant, but anyway. And it can call itself a god because if God does has, has certain things, does certain things. Gods create laws. Gods have property. And gods create beings. And the beings that they think they've created are the persons. And there's lots of persons in Britain. Right? Um, and it's created its land, albeit a fiction of land, it's a piece of paper, right? It's, a, it's not real, it's not, 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 that, not that stuff out there. It's pieces of paper with lines on it, right? It's created its own land, a two-dimensional legal fiction. But it's created it. And it's created its property, its land, and it's created its own people, which you, you registered once. You people who go out and vote. You, you people who have a driver. Who's got a driving license here? Yeah. Who's got a car and hasn't got a driving license? <laughs> it's illegal for persons to drive in this country. All persons who are driving in this country, you are breaking the law. They give you a permit. And you, you apply, can I break the law please? Can I break the law of the United Kingdom and have a license? Men don't need permits. And I, but I include women on there, I'm not, you know, I'm all part of the same. <coughs> so you don't need a license for anything. British Gas needs a license to frack. <laughs> yeah. And that is illegal. That is against the law. And a barrister and a solicitor needs a license to practice law. Do you know, unless you've got a, um, a license, that you can't practice law? And you can't be a lawyer. Did you know a man can be a lawyer? And every time you walk in that court, you are a lawyer. And you are representing a dead entity. So the judge comes up and says, well, these people go with it. No, no, I don't want a lawyer, don't I? I want to represent myself. We've all been asses saying that. How can you represent yourself? You can be present yourself, but you can't represent yourself. Nobody can represent themselves. Right. It's black magic, it's witchcraft that they're performing, it's Satanism. Right. You get a summons to appear at an altar, at the bench. The Sonic Dictionary, a bench is a high place an altar, a holy place. And you are summoned to appear as a dead person. That's Satanism. Satan. Satan summoned. Oh, witchcraft summons up the dead. Necromancy. Yeah, yeah. Necromancy, yeah. Necromancy. Yeah. And there's a, there's a law against necrophilia as well. They're still good. Yeah, but still, yeah. So, a man can't be heard in a place 
full of dead people. We're going in, speaking to dead entities, and these entities, the judges and clerks of court and barristers, and the corporations take, trying to take our, our property off us, but we can't have any property. No man, no man can own any property. If you think you can own property, you're a bloody fool. Anybody disagree with me on that? No. You own your kids, though? Or your children, should I say? Your offspring, sorry. No. <laughs> no. No. You're a bloody fool if you think you do. Well, if, if you know, create a trust. Don't own them. Surely you them. create a trust. That you can, yeah, you to. can. You don't even own your own body. Because you have to leave it behind when you go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> you were created by something that we like to think or like to call God, a God, a creator. There has to be a creator because nothing comes from nothing. So whatever it was that we're, how we're here has always been there. Right? Because nothing can come from nothing. You can only get something from something. Right? That cr creation, whatever you want to call it, creator, creation, right, has always been there, and we came from that. So we are its property. And this earth that we're on is owned by it. You are part of creation, you are part of the constituency of the creator itself. You are a constituent member. You can't get away from it. Right? Because we are all different parts of creation expressing ourselves, expressing creation's will in its own way. You might not agree with me. That's fine. That's fine. Well, think about it. Think about the philosophical part of this. And the people who are ruling us know this. Yeah. And they act upon our greed. Yeah. That's my property. How can it be your property? You can't own property. You can own your own mind, but guess what? Your mind isn't even owned by you because you've given away to these magicians and these masters of deception. And that's what they are. They know exactly what each one of us, what makes each one of us tick. And that's greed. That's separation from our ourselves. <coughs> they pick on anything to separate us. Anything. Liverpool v Everton, Man U versus Man City, black versus white, gays versus straight, um, British against Germans. Uh, every bloody aspect of our lives is they're trying to separate. We are all one. We are all part of the constituents, the constituency called creation itself. You're not part of it, you are in it. You are in it. Sorry, somebody shouted something. I just shouted men against women. Yeah, absolutely. Every, any way they can. People who got red hair against blondes. People got curly hair against blondes. People got to, you know, I, I remember at school, some teacher said to me, people with brown eyes are thick. <laughs> people with green eyes are lucky I've got green eyes. Lucky, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole system is put in place to make you believe that you're on your own and it's dog eat dog and you can have your own property. You can't have your own property. Nothing on this earth belongs to any of us. Let's go to the Ten Commandments. If it can find it. I'm not giving you a Bible lesson here, folks, I really not. Well, let's get real. Let's get real. <coughs> First commandment. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Do you think this has happened before? <laughs> nothing new under the sun. Where can the royal family trace their heritage from? Egypt. They openly display it on the... Royal website that they, they can trace them right back to the pharaohs. So can we. 
<coughs> thou shalt not have, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Who's me? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. The water under the earth? Why can't you make a... That's interesting. Why is he saying that? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity upon the fathers, upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Now, you probably think I'm a Jehovah's Witness now, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not religious in any way whatsoever. Um, but the more I look at sovereignty and property and law, the more I see we can't be sovereign because we've been created. And he who creates has the right to make the law, the rules, and own. And if you look through that book, all the way through that book, it says, come out of here. Show no respect to persons. Destroy the person. You have put a face on yourself so I don't recognise you. And you can go and say, oh, I'm sorry, God, you know what, Judgment Day or whatever it was. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I did pray every Sunday. No, no, no I don't, don't recognise you. Don't recognise you because you have your mask on. You go into court with that mask off. guess what happens? They quake. They bloody well quake. A lot of this stuff I'm giving you now is from um, a site called servantking.info. If you haven't watched them, watch them. Right? Um, Marcus. Marcus. Right, watch them. And also Christian Remedy in Law on YouTube. Christian Remedy in Law. Um, and also Bill Donoghue. Yeah? We know about Bill Donoghue. Anybody who doesn't know about Bill Donoghue yet? Please watch Bill Donoghue on YouTube. Start off with the Ten Commandments and find out who God is. Because <coughs> God is not what we think it is. We've been given a power of God to those who are trying to oppress us. And when we go in to the courts with that power, and declare that power and turn, uh, turn the fa their face away from them and burn it, which is what I've done, right? They tend to start leaving you alone completely because they can only act on their property. There is a thing called civil death. Has anybody looked into that? No, who, who has looked into it? What's it called, sir? Civil death. death. As we were saying on the radio last week, it's against the law to commit suicide. And he can hang you for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You can go to jail for committing suicide. Yeah. 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 How can, how can, I, what's that about? They're talking about the civil death. It's a That's what they're talking about. They're talking about if you commit a civil death, you become an enemy of the state. Right? Because you're walking. Don't forget, the whole world's in conflict. Because we're all trying to steal each other's property. If I go to the bar now, I'm going to steal their property with a promise to pay. I'm never going to pay them. <laughs> right? It's right, isn't it? I hoodwink them saying, how much you want to pay? Okay, there you go, promise to pay. And we steal it. But they are partakers as well. We've been fooled into being criminals. Start, so seriously, don't look at your Bible the way we've been trained to think about it. 
just, just want to read this. I've read this out on the radio. Great book, brilliant book. Get yourself a copy. Anybody not seen it? It's called The Royal Law, The Source of Our Freedom Today. I should say The Source of Our Slavery Today. Yeah. But there is a source for freedom. And it lies in this book. And what it says, this is when the Queen was coronated. Got to the point where this is the presenting of the Holy Bible. When the Queen is again seated, the Archbishop shall go to her chair, or, yeah, and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Why Scotland? Receiving the Holy Bible from the Dean of Westminster shall bring it to the Queen and present it to her. The Archbishop saying these words, Our gracious Queen, to which we are the soldiers and the workers, he doesn't say that there though. <laughs> Our gracious Queen, to keep you, your majesty, ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing that this world affords. And the moderator shall continue, here is wisdom, this is the royal law, these are lively oracles of God. That's the royal law. Never mind your bloody common law. That's the royal law. We're all going in there saying, oh, common law of your jurisdiction. I haven't even got a t-shirt on. Common, common law jurisdiction only. No, royal law only. You are all, all royal. You are all unique. We are all antinatus sui generis. One born before a particular person and a peculiar thing that cannot be named. What does peculiar mean? It means unique. There is no other John. There's no other Rob. There's no other Fred, Mary. You are unique, so you can't be named. Burn their images like I did. Does everybody know what I've done with my driving license and passport? Okay. This happened on the 12th of January. I thought, I can't participate in this crime anymore. Um, let my, my voice be heard within the powers that be, or the powers that still are, but they're not going to be for much longer. No chance, no chance. I... I haven't got a letter with me, but basically this is what I've done. I said, I am coming out of God of the United Kingdom and I'm turning my face away from you and I am under the God and the laws of God of the creator of the universe. <laughs> Here is my burnt images, right? And I burnt my face Face off. Imagine that. John Travolta. <laughs> face off. <laughs> I bear me face off my driving license. That person's name that I've been partaking in for the last 54 years. And my passport, I did exactly the same. And I burnt it off the paper license as well. And I sent it to David Cameron. Yeah. Right. And I said that on the 12th of January. And I also sent a copy of the letter, but without the part saying you can have your bloody burnt images back. I sent a copy of the same letter to the Queen. Four days later, four days later, I got a letter from 10 Downing Street, recorded delivery. I went, whoa, the postman went, bloody hell, what's this? I said, oh, this is, this is going to be fun. Now, bearing in mind that to deface government documents is a crime. It's a crime to deface your passport. It's a crime to deface your driving license. 
and you get a lot of for that. Don't take my word for it, have a look. I'm telling you. I cannot be face government property. And I took my face off. <laughs> the letter came from the correspondence officer of David Cameron, whose name is Katrina or Karina. She hasn't got a surname. And she signs in blue pen. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And it was sent, it was addressed to the person. But me being a nosy guess, I've got to see what's inside it. <laughs> so I signed for it, but I put by, you know, by with the call on. And she said, what's that? I said, well, oh, yeah. Doesn't matter, you won't understand. <laughs> oh dear. And it said, Mr. Cameron would like to thank you for taking the time and trouble to write to him with your views. Full stop. Enclosed is your driving license and passport for your safekeeping. Full stop. Your sincerely, Katrina or Karina. That's it. And I got that on the 17th of January. I haven't got a driving license. I've got a car. <laughs> David Cameron knows I haven't got a driving license. Sorry, you just handed it back to you, so you're no further forward. Oh no, I'm further forward. Well, I because I'm because I'm because, I'm because of what happened there, well, do you think it made me look into it a lot more, and now I realise why they sent it back. Oh, by the way, the response from the Queen was nothing. She has no jurisdiction. Well, she doesn't do the first one. She has the manager, doesn't she? Yeah. Contacted yeah. uh, and uh, uh, they never, yeah. they never write back to you when you put them in an awkward position. Because they've got no honour. Yeah. That's right, they've got no honour. No, well, yeah. yes, with respect, we're um, all members of the feudal system. Yeah. Until yeah. we yeah. wake up and realise that, yeah, it's not going to get any better. No, well, if you we look, look at a typical we're waking thing, up now. If you look at a, if you look uh, at a birth certificate, you'll see a red seal at the top. Yeah. That's the person who we have an issue with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it goes higher than that. It does. It's, the thing is, the power is in our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Right it is. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Our hands. And it says in the Bible, the time is at hand. The time is at hand, and it's in your hands. Right, let's have a 15-minute break for a smoke, and we'll go to part two then. Okay, thank you. I've only got about 40 minutes, I might not need that, I'll try to get through it, because I'm conscious there's a few other talkers, and anyway, so, Pearson, I'm going to give you the definition in Osborne's Law Dictionary, which is what the solicitors and the barristers use in this country. Pearson, the object of rights and duties, capable of having rights and of being liable to duties. Persons are of two kinds, natural and artificial. Natural person. Anybody know what a natural person is? Anybody know what a legal person is? They're both fictions. They're both fictions. Persons are masks, remember? Person is a mask. <laughs> right? So, a natural person, the way I interpret it, is people, pers persons, sorry, persons, who come from, <coughs> at the present moment, come from Poland and the Ukraine and Libya, and they're coming to this country and uh, being naturalized. Right? You are not a natural person. If you were born in the landmass called the Great, this is called Great Britain or whatever you want to call it, you are not a natural person. You are a legal person. 
if you are a person at all. Right? Uh, a natural person is one that's come from another jurisdiction <coughs> into this jurisdiction and took an oath, I serve the Queen and all that nonsense. Right? Natural persons of policemen, soldiers, airmen, Tesco. That's a natural person. Right? It's a company created in this country, although that's branches outside. McDonald's UK is a natural person. Right? All right, the father, the father figure's over in the States. But it has to follow the food regulations and all that in this jurisdiction. That's a natural person. So a natural person is not a man. A legal person is one that's born here. Or oh, birth. Sorry, birth. Why? Right. Because the difference between born, <coughs> born and birth. Now let's have a look at uh, what birth means. Just let me go to birth. It's all relevant, don't worry. <coughs> Anybody define birth for me? Somebody? Shit, birth, coming to the sea, we're coming to a birth dock. Birth is shit. Right, birth. Definition. Legal duties are imposed concerning the notification and registration of the birth of babies including still births. Notification by the father or other attendant at the birth is regulated under Section 269 National Health Service Act 2006 as amended by the Health and Social Care Act 2012. This provision also lays down the duties of the registrar of births and deaths to notify the appropriate body of the birth. Registration and, and particulars of the birth must also be lodged with the registrar of birth and deaths. Under the blah blah blah. Nowhere there does it say born. And what's a baby? What's a baby? <coughs> it's the property of Babylon. 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 And where are we? In mystery Babylon. Exactly where we are. Has to be by the bay as well. See again. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so uh, nowhere in there, and no other law dictionary, is the, um, defined born or man. <coughs> the closest to born you'll get in any law dictionary is Borg. I've told you what Borg are before. Bondsmen, servants, slaves, your... Parish. Yep. Parish. Mm. Parent. P A R. Stock. It's par. Stock. Yep. Right. Um, so, according to God, the Creator, you've all broken His law, and it's it is first and second commandments that you've broken. And they are all in order of importance. Right? So you've broken the first one. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any gods before me. And you've also broken the second commandment. <coughs> Thou shalt not make any graven image of thee. So what is that book? It's a book of law, and it's a book of property. What God is saying there is I created everything on by the sixth day, or on or before the sixth day, and he left man the last. That's interesting. Why did he leave man to the last? Because so much problems. <laughs> so that we couldn't say, I own that. I created that. Man was the man, man was the sixth, the sixth born on the earth, made on the sixth day. So you could say that man's number is six because he's born on the sixth day. All right? <laughs> I think some of you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> 
So this, um, this, this crime that you've committed against your creator um, is punishable. Tells you that in the Bible. Wasn't, wasn't intentional. Ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. Well, I blame Rome then. Or the royals, yeah, I love the blame the royals actually. Well, this is a book of law, right? This is God's book of law, right? Must not be changed. None of the words must be changed. However, there are 152 versions of the Bible now, <laughs> right? And for a book to have um, call itself something um, different from the other. Uh, under copyright law, it has to be 10% different than the original, or its predecessors, and there's 152 in it. Right, but that's the authorised version. That's authorised. <laughs> so, which is and why I'm telling you, when you read it, understand the difference when it says God and Lord God, and also recognize right, who the Elohim were. Because they're the people, or the, they're the entities that created man in their image on the sixth day. Right? <laughs> anyway, so this book is, is consists of the Old Testament and the New Testament. What's a testament? It's a co covenant. <coughs> it's the will. It's the trust. Absolutely. It's a trust. And that book gives you all the remedies that we need to free ourselves from our enslavement under an oppressive God called the United Kingdom, Mystery Babylon, Catholic Church, Holy Roman Catholic Church, whatever you want to say, yeah. right? That gives us the remedy to go back and take it back to the beginning, right? Now, God, who created us on the sixth day, said, you have dominion over all things, over all the plants, all the livestock, all the land, everything in the air above, da -da 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 -da. All you have to do is obey my law. What did we go and do? We ate of the tree of knowledge, which is the tree of good and evil, knowing good and evil. Now, if you know good and evil, or you think you know good and evil, you can start making your own laws up, can't you? No, no, that's not right, that's right. That's the way to do it. No, it's not. No, well. And start arguing amongst yourself. <coughs> think of it. You've got, I mean, I've, I've got a daughter, she's 23 now. When she was younger, a baby, I said, don't do that, you'll burn your finger. And they used to take notice of it. And then they get to an age where they go, oh, no, don't be top. Ow! And they learn from their own mistakes. Right? So they question, as they grow up, they always question your authority and whether you are right or wrong. Is that right? Everybody agree with me there? It's a it's an evolving process, we do it all the time. Like all you in the in the room who've had to go to court or something, and there's been many of you who've been stung, and there's been one or two of us who lucky enough have got the outcome that we wanted. We've learned through other people's experience and our own, and you do what works for you. It's an individual road, this, but... So... We're born onto this planet. <coughs> and we come out of the womb in a vessel called a placenta. That's the place of entry. A placenta. And we are tied to it by an umbilical cord that gets cut and then we get recorded 
to the United Kingdom. Let's have a look what the legal dictionary say about record. Record. An authentic memorial preserved by a court or the legislator. When an error appears on the record of an inferior tribunal, which shows that the decision is wrong in law. An order of Sertoria is available to quash it. See judicial review, blah, blah, blah. So a record of your birth, birth, and a record of your born is made in the court. Why in the court? <coughs> <laughs> right, so, so everything that you've done wrong in your life, everything that you've bought and sold, criminally by the way, because it's all fraud, there's a record of it. There's a record of every car that you bought, there's a record of every house that you bought, there's a record of televisions, uh, and even via the, the Office of National Statistics, I've got a record of every penny you spent on booze, fags, food, water, heating and all the rest. And you've used all that falsely in a fraud. Right? And these, that's where your remedy lies, by the way, in the court of record. Now... The Lord God, oh sorry, yeah, the Lord God, no, God made his covenant and brought out the people from the land of Egypt and set them free again, out of bondage, out of the house of Egypt. And guess what happened? It all went back to normal. Yeah, they all went back to the, they saw the God and turned their back on it, that God again, went, oh, look here. Better over here. Oh, they built their own communities and made their own laws. Which the United Kingdom has got its own laws. South Africa's got its own laws. Australia's got its own laws. America's got its laws. So on and so forth. You can't, you can't have a gun in this country, but you can have a gun in the United States. You don't need a driver's license to ride a motorbike in Greece, or you never used to. Um, now you do. Uh, in this country you've always needed one. Um, and all these laws are coming out on a daily basis. Uh, the jury, last year, three and a half thousand laws were created. Uh, and yet you're supposed to know the law. Yeah. Huh? Sorry, there's a difference between legal obligations and lawful. Oh, I know that. Yeah. No. Yeah. We, we all know that. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, yeah. when you said three thousand laws. Yeah. Did you mean 3,000 3, legal... Uh, their laws, their statutes, their, their, their amendments yeah, to things. Not, there is a yeah, difference yeah. Does anybody not, not know the difference between law and statute? Please put your hand up and I'll explain. Right, okay. <laughs> law is not legislated by the government. They legislate statutes. Your law is there. The Ten Commandments. That's it. Right? That's it. Ten Commandments. And you can you can wind them down to two or three. And that's don't breach my copyright laws by making a copy of yourself. Because that's what you're doing. You're breaching copyright law when you have a person attached to you. A mask. About the law of the king. Sorry? About law that the king made. The kingdom. The king. they're, they're, they're not laws. They're just statutes. Yeah. There's only. <laughs> Let's think about it. They can. The, right. The king, the government can create laws for its property. Well, the master law, don't they? They put a statute on top of that. I'll, I'll try. I'll go back a few, pay, a few steps. David Cameron and his cronies can make laws for the property that it has created. And it has created the person. Right? 
with our consent, by the way. Right? But if you're a man, if you're a man, they can't create the, that, those laws for any laws because we are not their property. We are property of God the Creator and under His jurisdiction and only His jurisdiction. Don't know how many of you know this, but the House of Lords is divided into two. You've got your temporal lords and you've got your spiritual lords. The temporal lords, um, when they, they, they take their oath or whatever, they lose their Christian name. And the spiritual side, they lose their surname. And the surname is the surety name. That's what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. Right? You have a Christian name and a surname. A Christian name is your God-given name. Yeah. Who's your God? Your mum and dad, because they created you. Yeah? They are your God. Yeah. Right? However, they've got their mum and dad right back to Adam and Eve or right back to before. Right? That's a Christian name. That's a God-given name. The surname is the surety name, is the legal fiction which was created on the birth document. The debtor. Right? And that's a sure. And what does it say in there? Jesus says, never stand surety for another. <coughs> never stand surety for another person. Show persons no respect. Right the way through this book, it says, don't have anything to do with persons. Don't swear oaths. And don't stand surety for another person. All our lives, we apply for things in our person's name, or what we think is ours. And it's not ours. It's not ours. None of it's ours. So, <coughs> so this creation, this God, this United Kingdom God, is not our creator, it's the creator of the person. So it can only enforce those laws on the person. How do you attach, detach yourself from the person? You've got a mouth, haven't you? You've got a mouth? I wouldn't go to court again unless it was dragged there. They would have to drag me there and I will say, I invoke Queen's Bench. Because you're just a gang of assholes, criminals, <laughs> magicians, and lying bastard barristers. Pardon the language, I'm sorry, but this is bloody well serious. Don't, don't register your children. Don't register your children. Yeah. Don't register anything. Because oh, you you know, no, not as the man. No, not as the man. They can only put persons in prison. They can treat their property as they bloody well want. You are not their property. You are not their property. No, that's. The thing is, we've been, you see, this book here, yeah, this book, you know, the Inquisitions was all about that. People, anybody who had that book got killed. Anybody caught reading the Bible was murdered. Catholics were not allowed to read that book up until 1962. You might be wrong on this, but the uh, Masonic Lodge, is that, the head of that is the Queen. Is that not it's not. She's not the head. It's one of her brothers or something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the graduate. It's the caretaker. Ken has there. Not more. Sorry. Is that part of Illuminati? I don't know. I don't I care. Don't to be honest with you. Know. Right. I know the evil bastards. That's all I know. Yeah. I, know. Right. I agree. Well said. Right. Yeah, well that's all. That's all I know. Yeah. Anybody who who coerces somebody into a fraud knowingly yeah. and not giving full disclosure yeah, for that, honor. they're well, evil. Yeah, no honour. Right. Well said, Dave. Well said. I don't care. Go on. Go on. And any of you Masons out there who don't know what I'm talking about, get that book and read it. Because you've been led up the bloody garden path, all of you. Um, it says in that book, do not belong to secret societies and those who stand like that. And, and those who do gestures like this. <laughs> That's what they do. That's what they do. I've been to court enough time to see what happens, and you see barristers going like this. Doing his masonic handles and 45 degrees and 33 degrees. Yeah. Sneaky bloody. But they think it's good, you see. 
And they are allowed to worship any god they want. Because you know there's loads of gods in the Bible. There's Lucifer, demigod. Why? Uh, and by the way, it's that that's one on the earth. Lucifer, which is the bad energy, obviously. Which has put you all in slavery. And the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to get. Right? So where's the remedy? Well, there has to be a remedy, doesn't it? There has to be. So we've got to protect the person there who may have murdered up to 42 people and 11 horses or whatever it was. Who walks free, can't be touched. I wonder if I leave the United Kingdom, have a civil death, but they leave me alone. <coughs> no, they won't leave it all. No. Because you then become an enemy of the state. Because they don't know nothing about you. You're a man, you're a god in a two dimensional world. And what can gods do to pieces of paper and fictions? Totally destroy them altogether. Right? So, we have to start thinking in a different dimension here. Right? Because all these people who've got all the wealth, right? They don't want to see all that go. Right? And they've got all the guns, and they've got all the microwave weapons, and, and all the other technology. <laughs> oh, by the way, 666 is an over the van. Right, is the number of a man. Right, the number of the beast 666 is the number of a man. Let him, it says there, let him who have knowledge. You know, 666, it's the number of the beast, which is a man, and his number is 666. What is that? Can anybody tell me? It's us. It's us. It's you. You are the beast. You're carrying in his name. Six, you were born on the sixth day. Right? You're carrying the beast documents and you're signing the beast's name. And it's also in your head because you think you're a person. You think you're Joe Smith. And you're signing Joe Smith and the action is done in Joe Smith. That's it. So get shut of the beast. And that's get shut of the from there, yeah. from there, and by action. Okay? That's that's you, each one of you. And while you're doing it, the beast is going, come on, give us more of your energy. I don't mind this. Right, anyway. Court of record. There's a record on everything that we've done. We have to Get shot of that record. Oh, by the way, I was going on about that, was I? Sorry. I am an enemy of the state if I commit a civil death. However, if I'm a peaceful man, a child of God who follows God's law, and all those laws in, that he gives us, those Ten Commandments, is basically not to injure anybody, not to cause anybody harm or injury or loss, and not to go fornicating after... You, you, your wife, your mate's wife or whatever, okay? <coughs> so, as a man of God, you're no threat because you're a man of peace or a child of God. You're supposed to go in the courts as a man with the power of attorney of God and act on his behalf in the kingdom of God. The God... No, this is, everything is the kingdom of God. Yeah. Even the court, even the courts are the kingdom of God. Even the United yeah, the Kingdom. Judge, judge doesn't see that, does he? You've got to make that clear. Judge will know this. The priest law. A judge knows this. Judges know this. They're priest especially law, trained. You're, you're taking his mass, you're taking his game yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, you're taking his game away, absolutely. Yeah. You're just saying, I am, I fall, I am a man of peace, a child of God, I have power of attaining of God, from God, because God's given you dominion over everything, right? And declare yourself his property, because you are his property. Yeah? Is that when you're 
Oh, never swear on it. It says in there, it says in there, do not swear oaths. Right, so why did it make you do that? Because they're putting you in, in fraud. Dishonor and fraud. Killing you on dishonor, man. Killing you. I swear to tell the whole truth. What is it? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth. How can one man know the whole truth? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. I mean, these judges, these judges, when they <laughs> these judges, you know, when they're trying to do something to you, and you, you come up and go, oh, hang on, what are they there? And you come up with something logical. What happens? Court recess five minutes ago, on the back, you get a law book. They don't know the law. They don't know the law. Rob. Dave, do you know when they give you a Bible, they take it back off you because oh, that's, yeah. that's the contract that you've yeah. just committed for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't need to swear. You're going to have the truth on yourself. You don't need to swear no more. Try it and see what happens. Try and see what happens. The thing is, the thing is, if you're, if they're going to give you a Bible, right, you've already said, I'm the person, I'm going to give evidence. Right, okay. Just get that far. Yeah. Unless I'm missing something, yeah. yeah. When you go to court, you invariably see the judge, and you see a big bit of wood above his head with two lions looking at each other. Yeah, lion um, unicorn. Yeah. Uh, he stands <coughs> under her, and we all allegedly stand under yeah. her. Uh, until that has disappeared, well, we're not free. It's interesting what you just said because probably none of you have noticed this, um, but Nelson Mandela died, you all know that. Um, and it, I was in Spain at the time. Uh, I don't watch telly. Very, very rare. And if we get, if the BBC comes on, it's by mistake, believe me. <laughs> but, no, it is. Uh, if anybody will pay the TV license, you, you're just as corrupt as those that are paedophiles, I'm telling you. Because you're just funding a paedophile programming, hypnotic. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway, me mates who came with me television all the time, we past. And there's David Cameron, he comes out to number 10 with his podium, whatever you want to call it, you know, that he read off. Yeah, and he starts saying, no, oh, it's very sad, and then that's what I mean, I don't believe what I'm looking at. I don't believe what I'm looking at. And Angus said, well, what? I said, look. And there, in front of him, and below him, was that royal seal. What's he telling you? And he also done it the week before last. You know all those floods? Coming out saying, oh, we're going to give an unlimited amount of money to repair all these floods. Done it again. He's standing above overseeing what's going on in the royal family. Every judge is at the back of him overlooking him, above him and looking down on him. What's Cameron telling you there? He's telling you. The sovereignty law is changing, yeah. Yeah. right? There's a law going through Parliament now, which uh, takes away the um, royal assent for new laws to come in. That's right, yeah. That's coming in now. I, I spot I was the first one to spot by the way, so you can give us a cheer for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people know about it now, but I'm, I'm looking at that site all the time, seeing what these criminals... And isn't it interesting? That uh, Peter Bone, yeah, yeah, this is the guy who's bringing all these, um, uh, what do you call them? Bills. Private, private bills in, private bills. right? Private uh, members. Private members' bills. Yeah. He's the one bringing all these crooked ones in. He's under the spotlight now for uh, benefit fraud. <laughs> yeah. Two hundred pounds. He's for two hundred thousand pounds. He's allegedly fiddled from the benefits agency. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, anyway, uh, right, okay, so where, where's that leave us? So we're, everything we've done is recorded, right? What did Jesus die for? Our sins. And that's the New Testament. What is a sin? It's a debt. A sin is a debt. So Jesus died for all our sins, our debts, right? And all we have to do is invoke the word that Jesus and the most valuable thing this world affords. This is the royal law, never mind your bloody common law, 
the royal law, because you're all of royal blood, right, all of us, because we're all from the blood of God, right, or Adam and Eve, right, and invoke the royal law. And then, you can, then, from there, you have to start looking at not protection, but a pardon. Not a posthumous pardon, post-human, a pardon. You can have a royal pardon, and there's also a free pardon. Now, I don't know the complete legal definition of a free pardon, but there is a free pardon. And I think it's a pardon from this, because Jesus has died for all our sins. Right? And that wipes the slate clean. But you have to go in court, you have to go to court in person, representing the person, right, with God's power of attorney, and forgive yourself, because you've got God's status in there, right, forgive yourself for the sins that you've committed, and get the court of record wiped clean, right, so... Look into it, folks. Free pardon. Royal pardon. That's where... You see? New Testament. Why do you think God sent Jesus here? I'm sorry. I sound like bloody Billy Graham now. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm not Billy Graham. Why do you think Jesus came, on, came about? Because there was an error in the Old Testament. And that error uh, was that you didn't have a chance to fix your fraud. He didn't have a second chance. There was no second chance. Jesus came back, or son of God, whatever, died to give you a second chance. Right? But you've got to do it in Jesus' name, or Zeus, or whatever you want to call it, right? Because we know the implications behind Jesus. We all know that. But that's, that's, the, that's the book, the most valuable thing this, this is. The oracles of God. That's given to the Queen. Right? And you become a servant of God. Yes, sir? Just a couple of questions. Um, the first question is, in the, in the original King James Bible, do you know what the Lord's Prayer is? Yeah, yeah. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those that debt against us. No, I haven't yet because I'm going through the final steps. I have, I can't, you see, the last piece of this talk that I'm giving is just conjecture because I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I've got to go into the court. You've accepted the contract, but I don't see anything. Well, no, I haven't signed anything. Mind you, I did sign the recorded delivery thing, so. But I've still got it, and I haven't got a driving license because it's not got my face on it. Well, there is an implied right, but having said that, I've sent them enough bloody letters to say stick it up your heart, haven't I? Um, think about it, when you sign anything, it tells you there, sign S I G N G sign that tells you what you got. Sin. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, but we're all learning. Everybody's learning, and we do things. We do things in these courts, with these telephone calls, when people are knocking on our door. We might know all this. But when you come under pressure and you're standing there, the judge, and you're looking up at him in his altar and he's performing witchcraft, Satanism on you, you do go to pieces. You can go to pieces. Right? Absolutely it is. And it's there to intimidate you. However, however, um, I am going through this, uh, if you like, civil death. Right? And they're doing things to stop me from doing it, believe me. And I'm not going to say what it is on the mic, but I'll tell you outside. They're doing things to entice me into not doing it. Right? And it's monetary as well. Tempting? It's not very tempting, no. But it's monetary. It has a monetary value what they're doing. And I'll tell you about that off mic. Um, and I won't say it shouting out either because one or two you might be recording your own. Right. Uh, and yeah, it's keeping me in the system for the time being, but only the time being. Don't forget, the time is at hand. 
It's yeah. down to you to yeah. do something. You to give it your mens rea and whatever it is, the, 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 uh, the, the thought and the act, do it. Um, stop using the person. Tell everybody you know about the person. Everybody. <coughs> it's the person that's killing us. Right. Have you travelled abroad without a passport? <coughs> no, no, I, no, not yet. I will. How are you I really. You can. I will, oh no, I don't. I would send me passport back when I was in Spain. I only sent me passport on the 12th of January this year. Yes, I was in Spain in December. You don't plan on travelling abroad again? Oh yeah, oh bloody right I do. You've got the right to travel. Yeah, you don't need the passport to travel abroad. Yeah. It's how you do it. You don't need a passport. Yeah. Well, not you, you, you can have a travel pass. You can travel on a Bible day. And guess what else? You don't need your birth certificate for a passport. What do you need? Anybody Anybody have a guess and tell me what you need? Doctor's letter. Doctor's letter. You're close. Just proof of my birth. You're close. Doctor signed by the medical staff. A baptism certificate. A baptism certificate. Yeah. I've still got mine. I can't believe it when I found it. Bloody hell. Um, so... <laughs> the events that are coming down the pipeline, please, please prepare yourself, please prepare yourself for what's coming. I hope I've brought something to the table for you. When I've, when I've done what I'm about to do, um, I'll tell you the outcome of it all, right? Um, I, I really, I, I mean... I felt this way before, but I really do believe now that when you read this, it's got nothing to do with all this. This illusion yeah. in our minds that we've got about this God. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a covenant with man. That's what it's about. And some entity, whether we've created it ourselves, it's probably likely that we've created it ourselves and it's took over us. Right, it was supposed to be our servant, and now it's the master. So, good luck, and thanks for listening.